Let's see if we can make this thing go now. I got a mouse and a keyboard and an operating system a hard drive that I'm going to use to get us get us rolling. So what I've done at this point is brought my hard drive over from my old computer that has Windows 10 on it and I've plugged it into the one of the SATA ports on the motherboard and we're going to go see here right now if it'll go ahead and fire up. And just to keep things simple uh, I have not connected a network cable and the wireless uh, is turned off on the card so I don't have any fights with Windows activation while we're getting things underway here. Getting devices ready. Shazam! You know, it took it about three or four minutes, but it um, came up and is working. Well, I'm going to go through and do some diagnostics on it and get some things um, get some things set here, and we'll see what we got to do to uh, get this operating system over on the solid state hard drives. But for those who who wonder, you know, you can pick up a Windows 10 drive and move it from one motherboard and you know one uh, operating system style uh, you can move it from Intel to AMD and off it goes so I just went ahead and the two discs those are the two um, SSDs and just tur turned them into uh, NTFS discs well my gaming slash performance video editing computer is up and done and working finally if I was just transferring data over, um, it would have been pretty simple, or transferring operating system. I, you know, I was able to plug this drive in to a SATA drive port and boot it up, and it took Windows and it was running. It was fine. I could have just gone in, uh, gone into my Microsoft account and reactivated Windows, and I'd have been good. The next challenge would be transferring the data over to. Um, the solid state hard drives on the board, the NVMe version. And uh, then it was further complicated because uh, I wanted to put them in a RAID array, you know, to mirror them, which I have now done successfully. Uh, I'll just say is the challenge if you want to run RAID, whether it's mirrored or whether you want to do it for speed or whatever version you choose, um, when you don't do a Windows install from scratch, there's no good way to install the drivers. Windows, if you're installing Windows from scratch, there's a spot where you can put drivers on a USB stick, plug it into the back of the machine here, and tell Windows what drivers you want it to install. And um, because I was using an existing disk, I didn't have the opportunity to do that kind of a challenge and I spent about a day working on it so you know you kind of got to want to do it pretty bad there were a few moments where I said well maybe I should change my mind and not do that ultimately and I've got some screenshots that I could show where things look in the in the BIOS setup I had to basically set the entire motherboard up in the setup screens in the BIOS setup screens uh, to set up the RAID array, which the settings are in multiple screens, so it's a little bit fun finding them all. But when I set everything to RAID, then my old drive wouldn't boot anymore because it didn't have the RAID driver in it. I was eventually able to find that I could set up the new array, to the two drives to mirror each other. I could set that up in BIOS. That worked. And then I was able to go back on this motherboard and change the SATA ports to, I was able to set them to AHCI mode, which is the non-RAID original mode. And then I was able to boot off this drive again. And once I was able to boot off of this drive, this is going to get complicated, sorry. Once I was able to boot off of this drive, there are, there's a way to manually install the drivers for the other controls. So I booted off of here. 
the RAID array was working, it just didn't have any data on it. So I installed from this drive, I installed the drivers on the other, on the RAID controller. There are three drivers that AMD gives you to, to install, and I've got instructions how to do that. Once I got those done, and those drivers were essentially installed on this drive, um, I use Western Digital Drives and they have a, a tool called Acronis. It's a backup tool. So once I got the drivers on here, I backed this up to an external hard drive, external Western Digital Drive, and then restored the backup to the RAID drives and she came across and booted right up and I'm good. So right now everything's running. Um, I haven't yet done any performance checks other than I'll tell you, you know, it boots up in about 10 or 15 seconds instead of two or three minutes. And uh, it's very snappy and very quick. You can see, see the machine. I managed to get all the lights working, which I'm going to put my um, metal panel on and you won't be able to see any lights. So it isn't a big deal for me. But for those who like lights, the RAM has lights, the cooler has lights. All my fans are working. Everything's doing good, so um, I should be able to shortly get back to uh, using this to crunch my YouTube videos and and process stuff. So okay, so now I'm going to move into how do you move the hard drive with RAID. What I'm going to say is that you know this is this is actually uh, very easy if you're not moving a hard drive. If you're starting off with a fresh window install on these NVMe drives. Uh, when you go to install Windows off your disk, there's a spot, and I don't remember if it's still the same. It used to be you'd hit F6 at a, as you're getting into the setup program, and it would give you a chance to put in, it would put in drivers that you needed uh, that might not be on the Windows disk, especially for storage controllers because they're very hard to install later. What I'm going to do instead is, since I'm moving it, I don't have the chance to go through that process. And while there is a method to go in using DISM tool, which is a command line Microsoft uh, DISM uh, image servicing tool, um, that's kind of complicated. So I went to AMD's you know, to look at their manuals to see how they would recommend putting in. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to set it up. We're going to set the BIOS in the new computer, the UFI, to all to RAID and set up the array. There are user guides. A couple of them come with, with in, in with the um, download of the drivers. And this one, I think I actually ended up, I, I found this number in one of the other documents, searched it online and downloaded it. But this one, this 53987 was really helpful. So number one, we're going to set things all to RAID. And you access the configuration utility and the HII, I don't remember what that stands for, but that is the configuration utility in BIOS. So you can do it without a hard drive attached or without a operating system running. Just a couple of things showing where their quick start guides are and, and what it supports. If you go into their guide here, it tells you to power the system on and hit the delete key and uh, go into the RAID expert uh, uh, configuration utility. If you go in on my machine, you go in here to the advanced mode, and then you got these buttons now at the bottom where you see where it says easy mode. It initially boots up to easy mode and you switch it over to advanced, and then you come over here and hit that configuration utility. And when you get into that, then, now I've already done this, so you'll see that there are two NVMe controllers, two physical controllers, two devices, one logical device. But there's there are three sections here. One's controller management, which is like the hardware. One's the array management, and the other is the physical disks. So if you've got a RAID array with two disks in it, you have two physical disks and you have one RAID array. So they want you to initialize the disks initially. I already went in and did a quick format on them so that uh, Windows could find them, but now they're going to want me to initialize them uh, following this process. So you go in there, and I just showed you where physical disk management was, and then you can highlight the two disks in each one individually and initialize it and tell it to go. It'll wipe out any data on the disks.
there's the spot where you initialize the disk and uh, here's a selection drop down box for it. And again, mine has already been done, so it shows that it's a physical disk and it's online. Then you create the arrays. Once you get those all done, I'm doing RAID 1 to mirror drives, but there are other ones you could use and you could set up. Here's the what they call the pre-installation. This is where you're going to actually go in and set up. And from the system BIOS setup pages and in the, that advanced tab, um, they've got a CBS line, an FCH, a SATA. tells you how to set these up and enable them, set them to RAID. So this is what that page looks like. So there's the CPU, the FCH, the uh, PROM 21. So it'll tell you to what options you want to make sure you enable SATA, then you want to set it to RAID, then you want to go to the PROM one and set it to RAID. Some of these things, the trick in this BIOS setup is that you need to do it sometimes in two different places for the same thing or it, or it doesn't work. That did trip me up for a while. So then we set all the different modes to RAID, uh, select the P PBS, and then NVMe RAID mode to enabled and press enter, then save it and do a restart. And as I said, once you kind of get all done, you'll end up with, it'll be two physical controllers and a, and a logical array with two physical devices. And this is what the controller looks like. now. Some of this is all showing after the operating system and its drivers are loaded, so it, it might not always uh, display like this while you're doing setup. I selected array and then I had to create one and I had to tell it that I wanted those two NVMe drives. And so now I have the array, it's in RAID 1, it's normal, it's these two different, uh, two different disks. And I don't understand what this disabled means. Um, it seemed to me that you know it would be really bad to have a label called disabled on your drives. Um, but I tried enabling that, and it messes things up. It kind of breaks the array. So I, I don't do that any longer. Right? I elected. I, I leave these looking like they say disabled, uh, but I have not yet found a definition of what is disabled. Once I got this up, uh, in digging through, I went to the RAID Expert 2 uh, app that's in Windows and started looking at the properties settings, and I'm wondering if the disabled uh, label is related to the cache uh, on the disk. As you can see in the red circle, there's a write-back cache and a read-ahead cache, and you can change those, enable, disable. Um, oftentimes when you use those caches, if the system crashes in the middle of things, you can lose some data. So you got to be real careful tinkering with them. So I'm going to leave them as disabled, but I'm sort of betting that's what the uh, BIOS is trying to show me. Okay, so once you get that all set up to RAID, then you go get your old school, your hard drive that was on a different computer, and connect it. These two NVMe drives are on the motherboard and they're to going to NVMe ports. And the board also has SATA ports on the edge where you plug in hard external hard drives. External meaning off the motherboard. So you get your SATA drive, plug it into that port. Then you go back into the BIOS and the one that where they had you set up SATA and point it to RAID now you have to go from RAID back to ACHI. I don't know if I did that, or if it's AHCI. Um, my acronym might have gotten messed up, I'm sorry. But either way, uh, take it from RAID back to conventional. Boot back up. If you try to boot your SATA drive that hasn't been in RAID, doesn't have the drivers on it, um, it won't be able to boot in RAID. But if you put it over to AH AHCI mode, uh, then it, then Windows should find, um, the motherboard should find it, Windows should be able to boot into the operating system. So then you boot into that drive, get it up and running, your machine will be running just fine. And you'll be running off of this drive that's in a SATA port. It's really cool. Then you can run one of this just like you always do. And then you have this, I'm going to call it dormant,
pair of NVMe drives that are over on the motherboard doing nothing, just kind of sitting there. If you want to change that, see here's the PROM21 chipset portion, and here's where SATA mode gets changed uh, from RAID into 8HCI. After you change that, you boot in there, and then you want to find your drivers. And I was able to go online and find them and find RAID drivers for, uh, actually, I think I went to Gigabyte's uh, motherboard support website, and I think they had them posted there. Uh, what you end up with, and I have these on a USB stick, what you end up with is these three um, folders, RC bottom, RC config, RC RAID. RC bottom will be the first one, and if you open that one up, you have these three files. So the first thing they want you to do, says power on the system. Well, we're already there. So you'd open up device manager, and I'll show that in a minute. And they want you to put in the RAID driver for NVMe. And so NVMe storage controllers. So you expand the storage controllers. You find the uh, standard controller for NVM Express. And then you update driver software. So then you're going to browse back to your USB drive or your C drive or wherever you put the drivers. Um, you do a right click. You say, you, I'm going to pick from a list of drivers. You say you have the disk. You browse. And in my case, it went over to the USB I drive. You find that rcbottom.inf. Click open, click OK, click next. Close that one. Don't, um, don't restart the system yet. And you'll find a second. NVMe one, and you go repeat that process, and you got to put that RC bottom dot inf on it. Keep on doing that, and then you go down to what's called unknown device section because the Windows won't. There'll be some things that they don't know what to do with, so they'll be in the unknown devices. And again, you do a right click and update driver software and browse. And this one, you want to go in and do RC RAID dot inf. Again, I've already done this, so mine don't show up here right now. Right now, I have an unknown PCI device showing under other devices. And I think that one is actually the video capability on my microprocessor on my CPU, which I turned off since I was using a in the BIOS because I was using a an external card and I didn't feel the need to have both of them running. But anyway, you'll find unknown devices here that you can click on and right click on to open up and put those drivers in as it said a moment ago. And this is kind of what it looks like. If you click one of these PCI, you know, pick this device, you'd, you'd right click, you'd open it up here, you'd hit update, update driver and, and then, it, you know, go find that driver file. And then there's still one more. There's the RC RAID ones that come out of the RC RAID folder. Here's your set of this is what, what it looks like when they're done. Um, then there's one more, because you had actually three drivers that you had to do. And so this is the uh, AMD RAID configuration um, SCSI processor device. And you'll find got to find that one out of the other devices and put in the rccfg.inf and follow that same process. So basically you're doing, you've, you've got these three drivers to load usually in two different places. And there's the RC config. So then you save and reboot after they're all done and bring it back up, go back to that screen and you wanna make sure they're, uh, make sure that these are here. And then up above, I didn't show it, but up in your hard drive, location it should show the array uh, up in the in the section with hard drives once all the drivers are loaded then the fun part is you'd like to clone your drive over to that new array and i've been using western digital external uh, backup drives and they come their tool is a version of acronis it's a limited version of acronis 2 image true image for western digital that does a nice job but it says that you need to use rescue me media in order to clone an operating system boot drive. Because the drivers aren't there, it's a little bit fun setting up the rescue media. I did it successfully, but it's more complicated than I want to try to explain here. 
because basically when you build the rescue media, you have to go in and load the drivers to the rescue media too. So instead, what I did was I used one of my uh, Western Digital uh, USB drives and set up, went to the Acronis tool and did a full backup system image of the of that SATA drive that my computer is running off of at the moment. And other tools that would give you imaging would probably work just fine. Uh, that happened to be the one I used. But the nice thing is, because you're running it off this drive, you can run Acronis normally. It doesn't have to be run in an emergency update mode. It goes pretty fast. You, you roll your data, which includes all the drivers, off to the external disk. And then you come down and restore your backup into that RAID array and make sure that it goes in as a C drive. Then you want to shut down the system unplug your SATA drive so that uh, the boot manager doesn't get confused and see two Windows systems. Um, and then go ahead and reboot into the new RAID array and make it run. It took me a while to figure all this out, but it really does work. As I said, I'm happy the computer's up and running. Um, at the point where I'm putting this together, it's been running for a couple of weeks now, and I'm quite content with it. it um, no complaints. It's got headroom. There will be some things probably still to tweak. Uh, my only other comment is the fans can get a little bit loud. Uh, when you're working it really hard, they'll come up. But most of the time, the box is pretty silent. It's only when you're, like, running heavy video crunching. And I'm glad that I got the long radiator with the three fans, uh, the 360. Um, I, think it, I think this machine needs all the cooling it can get, and that was the right thing to do. Okay, so at this stage I'm running a test run just to show you how this system uh, runs. And you can kind of see up here, you know, I'm, I'm rendering a video at uh, 1080 by 1920. Uh, it's running about 100 watts, about 66C on the processor. You can kind of see the general load is um, not too bad. It's actually less than 50%. Uh, the... GPU is running about 50%. You can see that down here. Um, I've got this uh, hardware info program running, and uh, it looks, you know, everything looks pretty good. It's running in, um, um, I've got, got some other things open, like web pages and things uh, running in the background, so it's, uh, there's, there's a fair amount of memory in you. I haven't brought the memory timings up. They're running just at default, so it's not particularly fast. There may be some things I can speed up there. Temperatures are all looking pretty good and straightforward. Temperatures on the board. Um, GPU looks like temperatures running in the 50, 60s. Not not uh, pushing it terribly hard. GPU power is about 35 watts. Power supply is showing about I'm on an under, uninterruptible, so it's what showing a little less than 250 watts um, for the monitor and all the parts uh, and the computer running. So not too bad right now. I'm uh, pretty happy with that. I'm looking forward to being able to process my video now a lot quicker and easier than before. So that's all for now.